In this video, we're going to create a new VPS using Hostinger, and we're going to go through the process of setting up a WordPress site on that VPS. There are several options when it comes to hosting a WordPress site. If you're looking for a very hands-off approach, then the managed WordPress hosting service may be a good option for you. But the focus of this video will be on using a dedicated service. So that is using a VPS. The real benefit of using a VPS is that it's a dedicated service and you're not sharing that server with other websites. So you have this server specifically for your own needs. And there are some benefits such as weekly backups. So there's automatic weekly backups. You have a real-time snapshot of your server. And there's also an AI assistant to help you figure things out regarding your server. Um, so you can interact with that from the control panel. The cost for the service is around $7.99 per month for the KVM2. And that is the, the plan that we'll be exploring in this video. So I'm going to walk through how to uh, set this up for your own WordPress website. So this dedicated service will have its own dedicated IP address and you will have full root access so that you can SSH into the server and configure things if you decide to do that. It's also quite generous. There's two CPUs, there's eight gigabytes of RAM. So I think that this service will be very good if you're running a medium to large size WordPress website. So going now to the plan, if you take the 12 month plan, it's $7.99 per month with the discount. And you can see here that it is 300 megabytes per second speed, uh, two terabytes bandwidth, eight gigabytes RAM. Um, most of the things that we've been discussing already, 100 gigabytes of storage space. Um, once you select the payment on the left, you can fill out your details. And there's an additional discount, which I'll include in the video description. I'll also put it on screen, but if you use the coupon code David B, it will give you an additional 10% off this purchase. So it brings the cost down quite considerably. Um, so that's very nice for a dedicated service like this. Once you have completed the checkout, you will be taken to the dashboard and you can see I've got this KVM2 on my uh, dashboard waiting to be set up. So if we click the button on the right, we can begin this process. And we'll just go step by step through this to configure our server. Um, one of the important things to figure out is where your customers are going to be accessing the site from. If you're not sure, it's okay to just pick something like the United States or somewhere in Europe. Um, in this case, I'm just going to go for Netherlands. But um, yeah, you can configure this based on where your customer is coming from so that they get the fastest loading time. Now we have the option of choosing a template to set up our VPS. So we can go with the control panel option or a plain operating system. In our case, we want to pick the application. So we want to do a one-click install of WordPress. And we've got some common options here. You can see the WordPress one on the right. Uh, we can also expand the list underneath to see what other applications there are. So there's a number of different things in here that we could install on this server. Um, so in this example, we're going to go with the one on the right. So Ubuntu with WordPress. And we've got a generated name for us here for this host name. We can just leave that. We can enter a password so that we can access this server later. Um, so this will be the root password. It's probably worthwhile adding your SSH key here because we will need to SSH into the server to configure it. Uh, when I was running through this demo, I didn't add it, but even if you forget to add your SSH key at this point, you can add it afterwards and I will show you how to do that in a few moments. So now the server is being set up and once this process completes, you should be able to access this dashboard for the server. Um, so that's under the VPS tab at the top. You will see that we have an IP address. We have details about this operating system and the location of the server. At this point, we can copy this IP address and open a new tab. And we'll just visit the IP address. And you'll see that we've got this kind of landing page. Um, it's just like with some instructions on how to get set up with WordPress. And you can follow through this if you want, but I will go through the whole process anyway here on video. So the first step we need to do is actually get into the SSH. Um, so we have to do some things within the SSH to connect the domain name. Uh, we can't do that through the 
control panel that I could find. I couldn't find a place to do that in the control panel, um, but we can do it via SSH quite easily. So the first step I need to do here is add my SSH key that I forgot to do earlier. I will give this a name and then I'm, what I'm going to do is copy my SSH key across from terminal and paste it into this field underneath. In my case, I already have the SSH key set up and what I'm going to do is just output the contents of that file directly to my clipboard. So we're gonna use the cat command and we'll use the pub key and we will get it within our clipboard. So I should be able to just paste that into the field on this page. Um, so let's paste that in, we'll add the key and then we should be able to access the server using this key. So this will take a few moments, um, but it doesn't take very long. It may be like 20 seconds or something. Um, and then we should be able to go ahead with the next step. Going back to the dashboard for our server, I will use the SSH access and at the bottom here, there's a terminal command. So this is basically just getting uh, SSH root access to our server. So copy and paste that in and you'll get this prompt which suggests if you want to continue connecting to the server because you have not connected to it before. Um, once you do that, you get access to this intro message when you're inside the server. Um, so it gives some system status details um, and where we can find passwords and things like that. In my case, these passwords didn't uh, exist in this location, but I will show you how to find those later in the video. So the next step is to get the domain name that we want to connect. I do have a domain name on Hostinger that I'm not using right now, so I'm going to use this to connect to this server. I will paste the domain name and hit return. And we'll just verify that this is correct. So we'll enter the Y key and we'll go through each of these steps. We do want to set up Let's Encrypt certificate. So that will give us SSL on our website to make the site secure. Um, it's getting this message that is inaccessible right now. And that's because our domain name cannot be reached right now. It's not pointing at any server right now. So let's change this for a moment. So I'll go to the DNS section. I want to add a new record for this domain to point to the server. So let's add an A record and we'll keep the alias, the, uh, that's for the root domain. So let's paste in this IP address and click the button. And once we've done that, we can test the domain name. So we'll see that the domain name should have the same page that we're seeing here for this IP address. So let's copy the domain name and visit that now. So it should be pointing at our new server. So we can see we've got the same page. So the domain is connected, but we don't have SSL yet. So going back to our server again, let's try this process once again. And we'll use the Let's Encrypt certificate. And this time it can be accessed so you can add your email address, verify it's correct. And it's creating the certificate for both the www and the non www version. So both of these have been created and added to our configuration for this server. So let's go through the final steps. I'm going to force HTTPS and we will update the system. And once that's complete, you can exit the server and our domain should now be working and showing the installation page for WordPress. And up on the top left, we've also got our SSL connected. So we have the little lock icon in the address bar. The next step here is to fill out the information to set up WordPress. So we can set a title, a username. We have this pre-generated password, which is fine. And probably one thing to remember at this point is to save these details somewhere so that you can easily sign into your WordPress later. Once you have filled this out and submitted this form, it will finish the installation of WordPress and you can now sign in. But before we do that, I want to look at one other thing. So if you want to access your passwords on your server and the instructions don't work for you when you first set the server up, they will normally be located in your user directory. So in this case, I'm just outputting a list of all the files in my user directory. And you can see that we've got this DB password and the Lightspeed password. You can either open this file and look at it, or we can simply use the cat command to output it to the screen. And this will give us our root password for MySQL and also for WordPress. 
Um, so then you can use these to sign in using the PHP My Admin or even via the SSH if you prefer to do it that way. Going back to the WordPress sign-in page now, let's enter the details that we set up just a few moments ago. And we can access the dashboard of WordPress now and install any themes or any plugins that we want to use. Um, so this is using SSL. You can see that the connection is secure. So everything is set up and ready to go on our new VPS. And if you want to get your own VPS or your own hosting on Hostinger, make sure to use the code DAVIDB to save 10%. Aside from that, I hope you found this video helpful. And if you have, make sure to give the video a like and subscribe to the channel. And I will see you guys in the next one.